Hi guys, Mac here. Now the tail of 2018, I got hold of one of the new Mac Minis and I did a review of it. It is the Core i7 unit with six cores. This one has been upgraded to 64 gig of RAM. Now my purpose for the machine was to be using it as a, a virtualization host, so effectively as a headless server. And that's a, a, exactly what I'm using it for. Now, as you can see here, for example, if we have a look, you'll see that I've got lots of virtual machines running and these are usually left running 24 seven. So let's have a look at what we've got. We've got a, a server 2016 domain controller. We've got a, uh, that's Skype for business. We've got exchange 2016, another Skype for business server, a couple of windows 10 clients. And, and normally I have a couple of other servers in there, like an office web app server and also an access edge unit as well for Skype for business, but they're not running at the moment cause I'm working on them. This unit runs, like I say, 24 seven, and that's really what I've bought it for. And for that purpose, it has been spectacularly good. Doesn't mean it's been perfect. So one of the things that concerns me a little bit about this is if we pop over here and have a look at the operating temperatures, have a look there. You'll see that currently this unit is running in excess of 90 degrees. Now, even when I monitor this for quite a period, I'll often see that it's running, even when it's relatively uh, lightly loaded, it will be running in the high 80s to early 90s. That makes me worry about the longevity of this machine. Now, the other thing that's interesting about that is even with it being that hot, the fans never seem to ramp up to their full speed. So for example, at the minute, it's what, 91 degrees? And the fans are running at 3200 RPM with the maximum capability of the fans up to 4400 RPM. It makes me wonder, why Apple is not cooling these to the capabilities of the fans. It seems like they're really reticent to actually get those fans spinning up. Now, the thing is, it's not as if it's particularly noisy either. Now, this i7 is right next to my main desk where I sit every single day. And why, well, now and again, I do hear the fans ramp up, they're not particularly intrusive. I mean, even if I turn them on full here, I mean, that's running full. I mean, I know it's really hard to see over a video or hear over a video, but it, it's not loud enough to be that's intrusive, it doesn't bother me that much. I just wish they'd got this cooling a little bit better because like I say, the, the operating temperature of this does make me worry for the longevity of it. Now this unit, apart from my virtualization, it's been so good. It's also ended up running things like my Plex server. It's got all my OneDrive backups and all kinds of stuff running on it. And it has been fantastic. Apart from the reboot that I gave it a few days ago, it had been up and running for over 30 days. The only reason I rebooted it is because I recently upgraded the memory. Quick point about the memory. I've seen quite a few people on the internet say that these units have four memory slots. They absolutely don't, they only have two. So you can see in mine here that I've got two 32 gig modules installed. Now a point about that as well. Now I have problems trying to locate these memory upgrades. I'm actually in the UK trying to actually order those chips. Now I'd managed to find them. I gave up in the end and ordered them from the US. Now what's interesting about that, these are the chips that I ordered, uh, $518, which by the time I'd put them through UK import duty and all that sort of good stuff, it cost me about 550 pounds. Now look at the equivalent price from Amazon in the UK, 1,030 pounds. So. It really is worth the effort of just, you know, waiting a few days to order them from the States. Now to give you an idea, I ordered this last Wednesday or Thursday and it, it turned up this morning, which is pretty acceptable to me. Now the upgrade isn't particularly hard as long as you have some experience with, you know, working on PCs. Now, as long as you take it patiently and make sure you've got the right kit to do it, it's not particularly difficult. So what's my final take on this machine? Well, so far, I think it's been brilliant. Like I say, it's been running all my stuff. It's on 24 seven and it's not caused me any issues whatsoever. Now, if I look at the power consumption, which I'll pull up on the screen now, I've got it plugged into one of those Eve Bluetooth power plugs. I can see, for example, that it's averaging at the moment around 63 watts. I've been monitoring it for a little while and it generally averages between about 60 and 75 watts, which in terms of a projected cost on the plans that I'm on, it, it puts the cost in at around 60 pounds a year, which I don't think is too horrific, certainly from the fact that this is running a lot of virtual machines and like I say, it's on constantly. Now, if I compare that to my iMac Pro, for example, which I'll, I'll show you a screenshot as well, that when it's operating, is averaging around 270 watts-ish. You know, the projected cost of operating that when it's loaded looks at around 300 pounds per year. Now, obviously that's not loaded to that extent for 24 seven. If I look at the cost based on, you know, just a normal working day, that takes it down to around 130 pounds a year. But anyway, I'm sure you can see that these Mac minis are actually 
fairly power efficient from what I've seen. What's my take on these units? Do I like it? Do I think it's worth the money? Well, yes, I found it really useful. It's fulfilled everything that I wanted it to do, which is basically just sit there quietly, running on my virtual machines and doing all my server workloads. And, and quite frankly, it's been absolutely brilliant at it. But like I say, I do have some concerns about the operating temperatures of it. What you'll have seen is a few minutes ago, I manually ramped up the fans to maximum. Now what's interesting about this is if you now look at the operating temperatures, they're now far more reasonable. But the thing is, it's not even particularly noisy anyway, so I'm not quite sure why Apple have chosen to have the fans ramp up so late. Like I say, it gives me some concerns about the longevity of this machine based on those operating temperatures. That's about all I've got. I told you it was gonna be a quick one. It's mainly just because I've been asked the same question repeatedly recently, just about how I'm getting on with the machine. If you do have any questions, pop them in the comments and I'll see if I can answer them for you.